We're turning attention to security matters now, and uh, Brigadier General Sani Usman joins us next. He's the former spokesperson, former director, Army Public Relations. Good morning, and thank you for joining us at the program today. Good morning, and thank you for having me on your program. Well, how does it feel when you hear your colleagues, uh, former top military brass, those in the hierarchy, they talk tough about what to do with security, but almost on a regular basis, we see the contrary playing out out there on the streets. Uh, naturally, uh, one will feel concerned because, uh, uh, you know, the country ought to have done better than it is in terms of uh, security and other aspects of socio-economic life. But of course, every situation has to be taken into the context in which it occurs. Uh, talking about uh, security challenges, take for instance what just happened last week in Niger State. It was so, so unfortunate and uh, quite saddening that we la lost uh, precious lives, especially that of the security forces of the Nigerian army. And um, so you, you look at a particular, you know, situation and uh, look at the circumstances that are brought about that. But by at large, uh, it calls for great concern from all Nigerians. And um, uh, it's a collective thing that uh, we should also be worried about the security situation, more so given the fact that the country is fast approaching the 2023 general elections and we need to have a credible, free and fair election. And that could not take place in an atmosphere of insecurity. Yeah, but that particular incident uh, you speak about, the president has spoken up about it, the governor has spoken up about it, and there's still more, but there's so many people trying to wrap their heads around it because there are several figures that have been bandied. Some say uh, 32. If 32 soldiers were lost in that, how many is a battalion? So if that amount of soldiers were lost, there's clearly a lot more concern than the way we are approaching some of these things. It does appear as though they haven't told us the entire fact of this matter. Well, that is why I said every situation has to be, you know, uh, viewed from the particular, I mean, the context under which it occurs. Uh, the most unfortunate uh, incidents that occur uh, in Shiroro in Niger State last week is quite unfortunate. and. Uh, uh, the facts are that um, what is there, you know, on the public domain actually is not exactly what the true facts are. Uh, what I want to say here is that I think uh, there are some kind of mischievous elements that are trying to insinuate certain things that are not correct. On the contrary, honestly, I would like to sympathize uh, with the Nigerian uh, security forces, particularly the Nigerian army, for the loss of the precious lives. And I know that the officer and his men, uh, you know, uh, fought gallantly and uh, they did not die in vain because, as a matter of fact, if I may have my way, they should be given a national honor posthumously because the facts are that uh, the, 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 there was a distress call at the camp and the young man rose to the occasion. But unfortunately, there is this issue of the, you know, menace of in, uh, informants that unknown to him, there were, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the bandits or the criminal elements also have a kind of ambush element. But they were bogged down, but they fought gallantly and they made sure that they would rather lose their lives than allow, you know, the, the, the perpetrators of the crime to go with either equipment or any other person. But unfortunately, sadly, they were, you know, they abducted some people and, of course, we lost those precious lives of the security forces. So sincerely speaking, uh, we need to commend them for, uh, you know, doing what they did because they rose to the occasion. And contrary to what people were saying, they do not even know 
that uh, those were the, the, the facts of the, 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 the matter. All they wanted to do is to protect and rescue Nigerians or whoever that was being abducted by the criminal elements. And these are things that have been going on over time. But I think what we should do is to look at all these issues and make sure that there are certain things that need to be done that the military should not even get involved in some of these things. Uh, you know, take for instance, the issue of, uh, you know, good governance, the, the issue of, you know, infrastructural development. Look at the, the, the road network from Handogari to the other adjoining towns. A journey that would have taken you 20 minutes now, it will take you two hours. And it affects even the, 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 the performance. Then the circumstances under which the, the security forces also operate. How, wh what, what, what is the number on the ground? What is the level of support they are getting from the people? So it's, these are the issues that we have to look at. And beyond even the, the, the you know, um, saying things, you know, passing instructions here and there, there is need for a follow-up. And there is need to look at issues as they were, the working the talk, not just talking as it is. One of the most troubling things for me uh, every time these issues come up, I continue to express my confidence in the intelligence that we have in the country, in the military, uh, in the police, the, the military, the, the intelligence community generally. And so sometimes I just wonder if we couldn't have gotten ahead of it. For instance, there are a sizable number of security consultants that we've spoken with on this program who continue to connect the dots uh, between some of the issues you've raised about good governance and the fact that there is a mining site and that mining site is a call to insecurity one way or another. Uh, from where you sit as a former military operative, is this something we could have forestalled knowing that there have been such issues as unrest, insecurity at mining sites where we, we unfortunately lost these precious souls. Yeah, you are, you are quite right. This is not just about mining too. Any business, business establishment, definitely you have to take into cognizance the effect it has on the society. Either it could be environmental, it could be security. It definitely a mining site, uh, you look at what is the level of uh, skills available, you know, within the local community. You have to import certain equipment, you have to bring about expertise, you know, and all the rest. That will attract, uh, you know, the interest of, you know, the, the criminal minded people and of course the legitimate business people because they are also service support and what have you. So by and large you have to also look at um, what is the security requirement, what are the likely, the normal you know SWOT analysis of establishing or you know even common economics will tell you you know when you are localizing industry you know establishing industry there are certain factors you have to take into consideration. So it is quite true about this issue and more so now given the economic hardship and the fact that whatever is being mined is uh, you know is a kind of something that will bring in you know uh, economic prosperity and what have you so a lot of people will be interested so to what extent have you take those factors into consideration and make sure that there is adequate security that is entirely a different matter it's just like our educational system people will establish school without thinking of the security requirement of those schools so it goes with the mining side now the issue here is that there are so many security challenges all over the country and you know some of them are even avoidable to what extent have you involved the time tested complete resolution mechanism so that you can be able to deal with them dealing with the root causes of this so that you can concentrate on more urgent and more important security. For general, where you have the security personnel spread all over, general, particularly the military, which is not supposed that, to be on so. that issue. Now, just one second. On that the issue, issue of uh, conflict resolution, my sincere apologies. On that issue of uh, conflict resolution that you talked about, there needs to be a government in place in that locality. You talked about how local some of these issues are.
But if we look at it now, I mean, the issue of uh, the, the land belongs to the state government. What is under the, that land belongs to the federal government. So one is wondering where the connection is at that, at that point. Con and add that to the fact that this happened in a local government. There is no governance. You talked about good governance. General, there is no governance. There is no good governance where there is no governance. In the local governments, in many parts of Nigeria, the local government systems are, are, are largely absent. So one is wondering if you would also connect that dot as to maybe because we do not have local governments in the, as effective as they ought to be in the various states, that we are not able to get ahead of these things before they come up. Yeah, I, I'm coming to that, actually, okay. because, um, you know, the issue is, uh, you know, about intelligence and what have you. And what you have just made mention of is something that I'm also coming to. Why? Because I made, made uh, mention of good governance. Good governance, uh, we have three tiers of governments in this country, the federal, state, and the local government. And how many of the local government out of 774 local governments in this country are functioning optimally? I said some of them actually are just there for the sake of issuance of indigenous form for those people who want to uh, get recruited into the military and what have you. You know, negating those primary responsibilities of the local government system. We have had an instance in Zamfara State just recently uh, when the security directive was given, no mention was made of the local governments in the state. They were just talking about the Emirates. So, these are the starting points. And Niger State has the highest gazetted, I think, um, uh, game reserve, or the, so to speak, in this country. So, so to what extent have you involved, you know, the, the, the local government and the local populace in the security of that, you, you know, of those forests and what have you? Because every security challenge happens in a particular state, in a particular local government, in a particular district, and sometimes in a particular locality. What is the level of the relationship? And that brings in the issue of intelligence. Remember, it was a good Samaritan that sent a distress call to these gallant soldiers, and they rose to the occasion. But unfortunately, the caller couldn't have called to or has not seen the fact that these criminal elements have also made contingent plans to ambush the reinforcement or the rescue team, you know, the, 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 the responders to the distress calls. So, so these are the issues. Some of them, they are even doing that innocently. And tied to that is the socioeconomic uh, deprivation we have in this country, because with mere, you know, pittance, some of them will just be divulging information. And I can tell you, what happened, what is happening there is that there were so many of the informants, you know, infiltrating the society to the extent that whenever they have catch words or court words for some of these things, that they will pass, they will ask how many Kunkuru. Kunkuru is a house award for tortoise, but they refer to armored personnel career the APC how many APCs are the uh, you know you know the military moving with so that you know the, the the adversary will know about it and you should understand the criminal elements they they are so uh, demonstrated to the point that there is even an understanding among themselves in this instance actually the one could go to another person's territory or top to go and commit atrocity the other one will turn a blind eye just like we have most unfortunately with some of our neighboring countries the the, the plural of small arms within the Nigerian society. They pass through some other countries. They will turn a blind eye. You cannot. You can pass through, but definitely you will not, you know, uh, drop the weapons in this country. So you rather take it elsewhere. So that is exactly the level of understanding and cooperation among these criminal elements. And the people know it. And these are some of the things that the government ought to take into cognizance. How do you break the people's, I mean, how do you improve the people's resilience so that they can be able to resist, you know, these uh, criminal elements that, uh, you know, that have an understanding that have, uh, have been perpetuating crimes, you know, on daily basis among the Nigerian society. So this is the issue. But then... The local government system comes into play there because they form a critical kind of buffer zone for the society. You know, organizing, you know, uh, you know, 
simple issues that could have been solved within the society. But now everything has been lumped uh, to the state and the federal government that an ordinary person doesn't even know what to do. And these criminal elements take advantage of these vulnerabilities, you know, provide soft loans, provide inducements, you know, you know, for them to open, you know, businesses and all the rest. And what is the price to give information? What is the price to, you know, support one way or the other, you know, the criminal elements as again supporting the government forces and what have you. So unless we connect these dots and proactively act on them, we'll continue to be going around on vicious cycle. And I made reference to working, you know, the talk. It is not just enough to issue instructions. You have to follow it up. The people that own these mining sites are known to the government. What is the government? Somebody has issued them license. Have you followed the due procedures before they even establish the mining sites and what have you? And you, it will even shock you to know that there is no correspondence, you know, gain on the part of those miners, you know, vis-a-vis -vis government revenue. You know, so, so, so these are the issues that we really need to tackle. Because had it been that the government is proactive and is getting much out of it, it can be able to do something in terms of uh, ensure corporate social responsibility, ensure that the environment is secured, ensure that, of course, there is no environmental uh, pollution and it is secured and the level of involvement of the host community will be much more and they will take ownership of all this. Thing. Most Speak, speaking of these tackling. things are missing. So whenever you have security challenges, you always bring in the security forces, particularly the military. And there is limit to which they can do, especially mm. given the environment they found themselves. You know, and we, we need the numbers. We need uh, other equipment, particularly communications and what have you. Speaking of, of tackling the issues, and I'm glad you, you mentioned equipment now. Uh, first of all, let me just uh, say that you rightly pointed out that the poor terrain, you know, in that area impacted on the ability of, uh, you know, the security forces, the army now, to take on the terrorists. You know, that should be emphasized so that the... Uh, authorities, you know, that should attend to it, will attend to it. But then again, the asymmetric warfare is on our hands, and uh, the uh, Chief of Army Staff rightly pointed it out in the track that we listened to earlier. Uh, some reports quote yeah. the um, firefight between the security operatives and the terrorists to have lasted between 4 p.m. and into the morning. That's quite a long time, Brigadier. And um, in relation to that, you know, last year, uh, the story was that if Nigeria took delivery of the Super Tucano aircraft, that it would be the game changer in the battle against insurgency. Why hasn't this made it, Why didn't it make any difference in the Shiroro event? And indeed, in other attacks that the country has witnessed in many parts of the country, uh, in, particularly in the Northwest in recent times. Please educate us, Brigadier. Yeah, well, uh, you see, the problem is that the I made mention of the fact that security challenges are so few, they kept on evolving. Initially, we are dealing with the issue of militancy in the, you know, south-south, and eventually we had the, you know, insurgency and terrorism in the northeast. And suddenly, we have the menace of uh, banditry and kidnapping in the northwest and north-central. Uh, so, it, 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 simply because we neglected certain things and, you know, the criminal elements are taking and do advantage of it. I kept on making reference to our policing system. There is no country without policing system. There are some countries in the world without armed forces, but there is no country without, you know, a policing system. And it will fare better if it has a very you know, credible policing system. But the reverse is the case in the Nigerian society. And these are some of the things that we are seeing, I mean, we are paying for because we neglected our policing system. And coming back to the issue of Super Tecano, you know, it is, you, you, you look at uh, the security challenges and, of course, the level of deployment of certain, uh, some of this equipment. I think what we should be thinking is the issue of emphasizing on this intelligence, but again, not just the intelligence gathering, but the capacity to respond more proactively to this intelligence. And that, to a large extent, is dependent on technology. 
even though to at some extent also the human intelligence is equally very important. And that is why I said, but you know, the Brigadier, government Brigadier, ought to the, be more the point involved here, in the... Brigadier, the point here is, why didn't the operatives, the, the army uh, uh, officials, you know, that took on the terrorists, why didn't they get support? Why didn't they get backup, perhaps in the form of the Super Tucano aircraft? Uh, aerial surveillance, you know, aerial support could have made a difference to save the lives of those men. Don't you agree? Yeah, I quite agree with you in the sense that, uh, you know, the level of support should have been more faster. But what I want you to understand, you look at the level of equipment. And I made mention of the fact that if I have my way, those gallant soldiers that died in Shororo should be given national honors, even though posthumously. Why, given the circumstances, they found themselves and they stood and fought all night, given the resources available to them, and insisted that they must kill the lives of Nigerians at the expense of their own lives. Now, coming to that, I made reference to the level of equipment and communication given the terrain. Remember, they call for reinforcement, they have to detach some of their, you know, vehicle to go to somewhere there are, you know, uh, services. And that is what I am trying to say now, that technology should play a role. We should improve on the communication system, and we should improve on their equipment. We should improve on the number. Because had it been that the, 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 the communication system is far more effective, they would have understood the magnitude of you know the, the attackers and the fact that some people were lying in wait for them to ambush them. So so given that we 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 ought to improve on that. But honestly given the circumstances they found themselves they were incredibly well and nobody could have done any better than and we need we owe them so much for two I mean no standing the ground to do what they did for the benefit of the Nigerian society. And this is, uh, this is one of the things that the security forces go through on a daily basis at the various theaters of the operations. And it need not to be so. Why? Because of the factors I earlier mentioned, and why? Because there are things that need to be done, and we have to keep on improving on it. Otherwise, we'll be going through you know, the same cycle as it were. But I can rest assure you, the, 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 the military, hierarchy as it was, the general officer commanding one division, which falls, you know, 31 brigades of the Nigerian army uh, was under one division, has relocated to that place. And of course, the chief of army staff was equally there. But the most important thing, despite the losses, I mean, the, uh, the, 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 the soldiers suffered, their morale was very high. And we need to sustain that. We need to support them. We need to encourage them. Unlike a situation whereby people are always betraying these, you know, soldiers. It may interest you to know, they overheard some of the attackers looking for a particular officer who has been a torn in the flesh. And unfortunately, he was wounded, but thankfully, he's stable now, he's receiving medical attention. So the, the complexity of the complex that we found ourselves is so, 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 you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, how do I describe it? It's so complex that, it, 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 it is not easily, uh, it is not easy to comprehend it just the way you think it is. Yeah. They have been doing their best, but given the circumstances they found themselves, it is very difficult. But we have to improve on that. They should, there should be more support at certain, you know, level given to, you know, people that are all oh, a detachment of military, you know, given the terrain, given the communication system they found themselves. So we have to find an alternative. And beyond that, again, even the intelligence you are talking about, people are benefiting from the complex situation in terms of the war economy. You know, there are complex merchants or entrepreneurs, so to speak, that benefit from it. They know what it takes to, you know, mine and get, uh, you know, it benefits out of it, but there are people also that will ensure that the illegal activities continues uh, pre by preventing the security forces, you know, doing the right thing. And how do they do that? They pass information about the security forces. They live within the society. So we have to continuously be enlightening the people on the role they need to play that, look, 
it is always good to support the government and the security forces to ensure that the right thing is done it's against the criminal elements because whatever they are doing is ephemeral. It is, it is just a momental. They will just give you Stephen and they will definitely come back for you too. So right. these are some of the issues. But beyond mm. that, again, we have to put in some structures. All right, we'll, you know, we'll talk a little the more. People in governance. In we'll talk a little more about that. And then another aspect of uh, our conversation will also come to play when we return in just a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back. We are with Brigadier General Sani Usman, former Director of Army Public Relations. Well, you highlighted uh, some issues and some glean from what you said. For instance, how, what kind of operational missteps could have led to the soldiers, that amount of soldiers being killed in Shiroro? And then, <clears throat> excuse me, among several other issues that you've raised here now, there seems to be something going on here. Uh, we see these terrorists who seem to be taking on the Nigerian army. And then you see another group of bandits or terrorists kidnapping people. Uh, some priests recently kidnapped in Kaduna. We see some go to, or, or, to go carry out some shootings in a church. So big question now is these things are not happening in isolation. The huge concerns as to they seem to be testing their resolve. And there seems to be a bigger picture here. From your perspective, what is the nature of what we're dealing with? Are we not at war? Well, um, we actually have security challenges, or rather an undeclared war. And uh, I made mention of the fact that every situation should be looked at uh, you know, in the context under which it occur. Take, for instance, you know, the issue of, uh, you know, the massacre of uh, hapless people in a place of worship in or on those states. It only takes a madman to take up arms, you know, to do that. But beyond that, uh, it has happened. What are we doing about it? That is the question. Up to now, there is no cogent, uh, you know, uh, progress report as to the identity of those who carried out the the the, the massacre and uh, why they did it. You know, the motive behind it. And unless we unravel that kind of uh, those things, we cannot be able to situate it. Yes, I quite agree with the fact that you may not think that some of these challenges are not are happening in isolation. And uh, sometimes it could also be sheer coincidence. But one thing I'm sure, I'm certain about is the fact that uh, the pressure in the Northeast on the Boko Haram terrorists had made them to kind of uh, move beyond the Northeast to other parts of the country. And... Uh, Apart from also the military onslaught and what have you, there are proactive be uh, measures being taken by the government that the kind of cut off, uh, I mean, their source of supplies, of logistic supplies, especially, again, funding. So they are scavenging. And hence you see the renewed effort at hostage taking, you know, kidnapping in the northwest and north central part of the country. They're particularly targeting, the, you, know, uh, you know, the foreigners, the Chinese, because they know for sure that it's a kind of sure banker they will get money, as it were. You let, know? let me add so to this, General. These are some of the issues that... Yeah, add this to the conversation. Apologies so, for jumping in. The Zamfara state government, you, you heard about that as well, where they, they want about 9,500 people who are qualified to pick up the form, apply to get guns, they say, for uh, what? To defend themselves against terrorists. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, they also have huge mining areas in Zamfara as well. Yeah, that is what I'm saying. I, I, some time ago, I had a, a television appearance, and we discussed that issue. And uh, 
you know, the security directives, and we tend to gloss over certain issues. The Zamfara issue, everybody, yes, the community protection group and the fact that the government has called on the citizens of the state to procure arms to protect themselves. But they were silent about the illegal arms, I mean, uh, illegal mining going on in the state. So these are some of the issues, and the may, I made reference of the fact that we should also walk the talk. It is not just enough to issue instructions, but how realistic are they? And I made reference to the fact that, in fact, the police commissioner that was asked to issue license, does he even have the power to issue license? Um, but if, if, he, if he has, which caliber of weapons? Certainly it is not uh, the, 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 the automatic weapons that the, you know, the bandits and the kidnappers and the terrorists are operating with. So now, how do we reconcile that aspect? So these are some of the kind of inconsistencies we have in the system. And unless we have that, and beyond that, again, security is a collective responsibility. We have seen instances, you know, particularly with uh, the Operation Hader and Daji embarked by the, you know, the armed forces of Nigeria in conjunction with other security agencies, you know, when they, con they concentrated on slout on the terrorist location or the bandits location in Sokoto and Zamfara State, they tend to migrate to other parts of the country, particularly, you know, the neighboring states of Katsina, Niger, and Kaduna State. So these are the issues. So even if you are having any policy at the state level, it should be in consultation with right, not General. just necessarily the stakeholders in the state, but also the neighboring state and with the security agencies, because okay. you that, ought to have kind of blocking forces when you are doing those kind of things. All right. So we need to bring in these are some of the missing links. And again the okay. coordination. Yeah, just the, before the you coordination proceed on that, but, but just before you proceed, uh, we also do have uh, Mr. Nyokashi Adekoya who is a security consultant to weigh in on the matter as well. Good morning and thank you for joining us. What is your reading of what is playing out across the country? Yeah, thank you, Chamberlain. Um, I think the general has highlighted the main issues that we have when he talked about policing. And uh, it's good to see um, our military colleagues in the industry beginning to face the reality on ground. Um, he did talk about um, when you conduct certain military operations like this, the need for um, having soldiers on blocking operations. I don't know if you recall sometime last year or early this year when you had some forces on blocking operation and they were slaughtered, basically. Uh, so you, you can't have the military do it alone. You can't have a federal police force that is under-resourced also do it alone. The conditions on ground are so austere. The threat conditions are quite dynamic. We are, we are shooting at a moving target, target and remaining rather static. The initiative is with the attackers because they, they move to a forest belt from Niger, from, sorry, from Niger State to Zamfara, to, to Kasina, to Kaduna. And that belt is where they maintain presence and they maintain their operations and they can evade um, government forces. And the communities along those um, routes will rather just, um, you know, um, look the other way. Um, even if the communities themselves look the other way, we know that um, the DSS has station chiefs in every local government in this country. So the problem is not a lack of intelligence. We have the intelligence. The problem is not a problem of um, capacity. We, capacity, we have the man, manpower. It may be a function of capability and a will, a will on the part of the leadership to do what is right. And to do what is right, we need to look at the constitution, break up the chain of command, take the policing local, give the military some respite. We must be more sensible in our approach to security. Security is not rocket science. You don't have to be a retired general, a retired police officer. Um, to know what is best for this country. I mean, we are now in a democracy, and the dictates of civil rule, you know, espouses that you must enthrone civil leadership in everything that has to do with security until we decouple our regimented approach to these national issues that we have that are quite dynamic. 
We will only keep going on from one incident to another incident. Then you hear one operation to another operation, as the retired general knows. In this country, a minimum of three members of our armed forces die every day. A minimum, a minimum, every day. These are fathers, these are uncles, these are sons. These are people that will not come home again. And the question we ask is, why the waste? Why the waste? All we have to do is show leadership at the National Assembly, pass a, re a, a revised and a reworked police act. The one for 2020 doesn't deal with the issue at all. If we don't do that very quickly, uh, there is a, there's a big problem. You know, and you don't want a position where the members of the armed forces themselves begin to lose morale. You can lose morale not just because you don't have equipment or you don't have your allowances and the rest. You know, if the fight against you, the soldiers are trained not to die. They are trained to defend the country, not to die. So there is, there is a big problem um, afoot. Just, just and, one thing, uh, you, you, yes. you've raised quite a number of significant issues, you know, and you've been consistent about one of them in particular, and that is uh, the, how local approaching uh, security issues from the local level. And there is hardly any security agency in Nigeria that is not located uh, within the localities. Uh, but then there is something the governor of uh, Imo State, uh, Hopu Zodima, said recently. Uh, he, he talked about the need for the security agencies to collaborate more. And that if we, we do that, if I, can, if I can quickly quote what he said, uh, we, we, there is... We need to develop a framework within which all security agencies will work jointly and in synergy to confront the current security challenges and that that fact cannot be overemphasized. That's what you have on the screen there. I'm just wondering uh, where you see these lacuna uh, in the collaboration and how significant that is in our fight against all shades of insecurity. Um, you know, we are uh, collaboration, you can collaborate. But if you collaborate, in collaboration, you talk about synergy. If you add one plus one, you get two. Then that collaboration is not effective. If you do one plus one and you get four, the additional two difference is the uh, collaborative power of synergy. The issue has gone beyond collaboration. The issue really is a structuring problem. Um, you can't use, how would I put this now? We are, we are approaching security from a very wrong perspective. And until we correct that position, there's nothing we do that will be right. If you say collaborate, uh, I've talked about this several times. You want customs to collaborate with immigration <laughs> so that the people who come from Mali can stop coming in. But you have the West African protocol, the free movement protocol. Uh, what can your collaboration do? They have free movement. Okay, you don't share data with the other West African states. Uh, even if you do, it's not structured. So we, we have border posts that are sometimes not correctly manned. We have several structural issues with our territorial integrity. So this is, this is not really the issue of collaboration now. It's more of an issue of being taking a local approach, giving the communities an increased responsibility for local security, like we had in the days of um, local police. Why do we need to do this? We need to give our military that opportunity of an added force multiplier. Because if you have state policemen who are armed with service pistols and shotguns, working with community vigilantes, working with the military to address local issues, almost every state has a brigade, minimum a brigade, okay? If you have a brigade and our big brigades are not as structured as they should be, so if you say you have a brigade of like, God knows how many men we have, they won't tell you. And then you have state police, and then you have the DSS, and then you have the NSCDC. You know, collaboration can make more sense, but the local policing structure will take the lead. And our federal forces will, pro will provide that superior suppressive firepower after contact has been made by the first forces. So what we have is that we cannot even effectively set up for blocking operations when we are going on major onslaughts in the Northwest. And I agree with the general that a lot is happening in the Northeast. 
what they are not telling you and I is that the insurgents in the Northeast are now no longer majorly Nigerians. It's an insurgency led by majorly foreigners. The major Nigerians, the, the, the Bonu state government and the Yobi and Adamago state government has almost had like over 50,000 um, people return from the bush, surrendered, because now the conditions of ground has changed. The, the rascals we have in the north, Northwest, some of them are Nigerians, a fair majority are from the Sahel. Yes, I do agree. But they are finding joy. They are finding joy in pockets of communities, in areas of low um, government visibility. So they are finding joy in those places. You, for you to block effectively, Niger must block, Kaduna must block, Katsina must block, Zamfara must block. We can narrow these idiots, forgive my language, we can narrow them to a very tight space and combat them. And they won't have the opportunity. So we don't have the forces. We don't have the force supplier. We are not structured correctly. It is as though we, we are, we are, yeah, we, we are, this is really. We need to. We, we thank you very much indeed for your perspectives, Onyekachi Adeko, security consultant. And general, in conclusion, from what he said, it, it, it appears as though well, there are some people, you know, in high places who are happy to see foreigners run roughshod over certain things. And in, to put it differently, some even think that there is sabotage within our security agencies at the highest level, because if not, these things could easily be nipped in the bud. Uh, I wouldn't call it sabotage, but I know that there is uh, actually a need for improvement. And uh, I was making reference to coordination. And, uh, of course, Adekoy has made mention of the fact that there is need for synergy. But uh, I think the divergent aspect is the fact that uh, even if you have the intelligence, you ought to have the capacity and the capability to respond timely. So these are the issues, but whose responsibility it is to do that? There, whether we like it or not, there is so much that needs to be done in terms of coordination and cooperation and synergy of efforts among not just necessarily the Nigerian society, but even the security you know, component themselves. Because there were uh, allegations of, you know, some of them, they, 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 are, they work at cross purpose with each other, you know, because of the lack of synergy. They don't see themselves, you see themselves, you know, as competing against each other when the, ideally they are supposed to cooperate, share information, and sometimes jointly carry out operations. But they, they are always concerned about, you know, in terms, you know, whose service is the first to do this to, to impress the political masters. And it shouldn't be so. You know, when you have security challenges of that nature, there should be uh, effective, you know, structure that, you know, give out, you know, directives and ensure that those directives are properly coordinated and followed through. And All of right, course, you really critically reevaluate it to see to what extent you 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 are you 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 are making progress. So okay. these are some of the things, and we unless we, and none point. of them is happening in isolation with each other. So yeah. it is supposed to be a comprehensive approach, you know. And I do remember that, at least in recent history, this question of cooperation and collaboration within security agencies. We've spoken about it for seven years. Well, we thank you very much indeed for your perspectives, Brigadier General Sunny Usman, former Director, Army Public Relations. Thank you, as always. Thank you for having me on your program.